Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, CJ. I opened my bookstore and I filmed a tour and we're also gonna do a bookstore Q&A with some questions I gathered on Instagram. You didn't even do the intro. And you're watching. CJ! Yeah, yeah. Okay, tour's at the end of the video. So if you're only interested in that, scroll through you know what i mean but we're gonna answer some questions in the upfront some are about money some are about inventory some are about logistics some are about vibes it's gonna be great question number one did you get to this point just with money you saved from the truck or do you have a day job too i have a day job i have a day job and i freelance somewhere right now so sunny's is technically my third job <laughs> um Sunny's was profitable in 2022, which is very fun and cool. And to be totally candid with you, I was not expecting to find a physical retail space. So I took that money and spent it on taking my dad on his 70th birthday vacation. <laughs> um, which I was very lucky and grateful to be able to do for him. You know what I mean? I think that's very fun. But that meant that I kind of wiped out my sunny savings reserves, which was fine with me because I didn't have any big purchases impending um, from my point of view at that time. And it meant that I had no stockpile to put into the retail store. Long story short, we found the space that the physical store is now in and it meant that I needed to have money to invest into it. What did I do? I put all of that onto a credit card. <laughs> I also am very lucky to have had the actual amount in my bank account if anything went drastically wrong and I needed to pay off that credit card immediately. But my thinking there was I'm taking a chance on these upfront costs and I'm going to keep it separate from my personal life savings and I intend to pay it down very quickly as quick as I can. I don't think this is like a very smart thing for anyone to do and I think that in retrospect maybe I should have applied for a small business loan because they have better interest rates but it was such a small amount I mean it wasn't a small amount but as far as money to open a business it was a small amount it was around fifteen thousand dollars to the total investment thus far um that I didn't feel like doing it to be totally honest with you, like my business spending credit card that I have under my LLC had a limit that's high enough for me to just like put things on and I kept paying it off slowly over time. So I'm not recommending what I did, but it is what I did. It is what I did. Uh, also my camera is dying. I hate that. I hate that for me so much. I really need to invest in a second battery. Someone remind me to do that. So my camera's dying and I'm gonna charge it and I'll get back to you in a couple hours. Okay, be right back. Hi, I'm on my phone now, really fun. Decided not to charge my camera. Okay, I think we'll keep on like the financial stint of the questions that we're answering right now. General startup cost. I think it's around 15K right now. That is inclusive of the shelving, of the flooring of constructing a partition wall in the space, getting a drywaller in there, and then the physical wood that was needed to build the shelves, the cash wrap stand, the table in the middle, um, and also, what else did it go to? I mean, that list doesn't sound like very much, but wood is incredibly expensive. The shelves were expensive. They're from Ikea, but you know, they're still expensive. And oh, the vinyl graphics on the wall, like the art, the stools, the table, the furnishing, the, you know, it all just added up. It does not include the cost of stocking and refreshing our merchandise. That is I didn't include in part of the core startup costs. That's just like, you know, normal business expenses. Um, yeah, to be totally honest, I'm also not great at tracking the expenses of this business, which is not good, okay? I, <laughs> I hired our tax guy to become our bookkeeper now because I need to get better at it. Um, he is going to go into QuickBooks and categorize the expenses for 
the first eight months of the year and then maybe I'll take it over from there but honestly I don't know if I will. I might just pay him monthly because I am too busy to be able to do it myself. So yeah that is some of the money stuff about Sunny. I think the 15k also includes our new book cost. I kept that around like for the initial stock it was probably like 3k and then um I've been refreshing it as stuff sells and like updating inventory and stuff. That is much 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 lower than traditional bookstores would invest in startup cost in new books and that is because we sell used books which we get from the community, get from trade-ins, get from thrifting, get from used book sales, get from church library sales um, and also because of our size. We're much smaller than like a lot of bookstores I would say. We probably have like a thousand books in the store total um, and it's like only 650 square feet so it's not huge by any means. Someone asks, is rent reasonable? I think it's kind of expensive for Yuma, Arizona. It's $850 a month and that includes all of our utilities. Uh, I have to pay for my own Wi-Fi, which sucks because no Wi-Fi people get into the building. So it has to be like a prepaid hotspot, which are really expensive and they don't exist in like unlimited data plans. And I don't know, I think that's kind of a lot for Yuma, but I've been told it's not and it's a good deal for retail. I know it'd be like three times that amount in Portland or something. So it is cheaper, but for my tiny hometown, it still feels expensive, <laughs> if that makes sense. What's the response you're getting from the community? This has been maybe a little bit of a mixed bag, but overtly positive. Like people are stoked. They're so excited to have an independent bookstore. They're like, oh my God, the community needs this so much. Like, we're so happy you're here. I've had booksellers, I've had librarians, I've had like a bunch of queer people come in and feel like it's a queer owned space and they're like stoked about that and happy to be in a space that feels good and safe to them. Um, I have had like a little bit of looky loos who are, you know, the store is just not for them and you can tell that. Um, sorry, my dad's texting me, so I'm swiping it off my screen. And that is fine. Yuma is a conservative red town, and I don't think that space will be for everyone. And I'm not going to cater to them anyway. But overall, it's been really fun. I think people are liking the space. Okay, how does your full-time job feel about it? Do you have flexibility to work on Sundays during your 9 to 5? Overall, they are really supportive. They're happy for me and like no this is my passion project and I'm such an oversharer that I've um included them in like every aspect of it so far I work at like a pretty small company of 12 people and they're stoked uh as far as flexibility goes I how much should I say um as far as flexibility goes I don't work Fridays anymore so I do have flexibilities in that capacity and we're only open Wednesday through Sunday. So right now my dad is working Wednesdays and Thursdays and then I'm in the shop Friday through Sunday, which has been working so far. What was the idea behind the Sunny's branding? How did you come up with it? So my good, so my ex coworker, her name is Megan Snelton. She is a graphic designer and also a really cool marbling artist. I'll link her down below. She did the brand identity for me. We worked at a design studio previously together and if I remember what I briefed her on like two years ago, it was like, I want something sunny, something joyful, something optimistic. Doesn't feel like too stuffy or minimal or designed of like this moment. I want it to feel more community focused and like fun. Like it was just really important to me that the branding felt joyful because I think my personal instinct, it would have been like way more minimal and austere even. And I think I had a healthy balance between my design impulse as like a person and then like what I wanted the brand to feel like. And those things are competing a little bit, but I'm glad I went with like the riskier, not that the Sunny's branding is like risky or like avant-garde in any way, but it is more playful and I think more colorful and just like joyful, I guess I would keep saying, than my design instinct myself. And then she created like a bunch of fun illustrations and a palette and just blew the design system out. And then I've had a bunch of other coworkers and friends who have done supplementary designs for Sunnies and helped out on like merch release drops and stuff along the way. 
so it keeps expanding. How are you hand handling employee slash store coverage? Do you have a plan to hire? And then how are you managing the two jobs? So those are kind of the same question about being in two places at once. Uh, luckily, my dad is 70 years old and I can put him in the store. <laughs> Um, he has loved working at Sunny so far. He's like, oh my God, this is like giving my life structure and purpose, like not to sound too corny, but it's been really good for him and for I think our family in general. So I'm really lucky to have free senior citizen labor. Life hack, life hack is to get an old person in your life and put them to work for free. Um, and then I've been working Fridays through Sundays. I think like in the future, I will reach a breaking point, <laughs> not to sound dramatic, but I mean, I'm working every single day right now um, in multiple places and that won't be sustainable forever, but it is what we are doing right now. And I have a lot of support from my dad, from Kiki, like he does almost all of our life admin stuff with cleaning the house and making food and doing laundry, like just really taking on a lot of that domestic labor so I don't have to. That isn't really because of Sunny's, that more so is our dynamic anyway, but it absolutely helps um, to not have our life be in complete disarray. As far as hiring in the future, I don't know. I definitely would want to pay someone well you know what I mean? Like I'm not going to pay someone $12 an hour or something to sit in the bookstore. <sighs> so I don't know. I don't know what CJ as like a boss or like someone who has employees looks like for a venture like Sunny's. It might happen if we grow one day enough to need that. But right now we're just like keeping it in the family and, you know, putting as much into it as we can. That's like also a position of privilege I'm in right now is being able to have other streams of income where I'm not having to like work to the bone to get Sunnies to be paying all the bills, you know? Like I can work as much, I can put as much into it as I want to and then that's what I get. Does that make sense? What materials did you use for your tables and shelves? Kiki's right next to me. Maple. Maple plywood. Um, of varying widths, I think, or were they all three quarter inch? All three quarter. They were all three quarter inch, and then he like glued some together to double the thickness. He okay, he laminated them together to double the thickness. Um, to what does that do? I think it's just like what you're supposed to do with shelves, and then also it like helps their sturdiness, right? Mm -hmm. Aesthetic thing. Oh, it's it's also an aesthetic choice. <laughs> and then we like kept the exposed ply everywhere and stuff. Um, but yeah, Kiki built the whole craft wrap and the table in the middle and our like book risers and our bookshelves, which was a huge cost cost savings as well. If we go back to the money questions in the beginning, how can I trade in used books? We now have a more formalized approach to this. Thank God, because I was kind of losing my mind in my inbox trying to trace who did what. I have a Google form, which is in my Instagram bio, but I guess I should put it on my website too. Good reminder to myself now, and I'll put it down below, I guess, where you can put in the titles you're interested in trading and then what you're hoping to get in your trade, and then we'll get back to you if we feel like it's a good fit. Um, general rule of thumb, the books you want the most are the books we want the most too. <laughs> um, so we're looking for, you know, contemporary new releases. We're looking for popular sci-fi and fantasy titles. We're looking for cool translated stuff, feminist stuff, queer stuff, leftist stuff. Um, not like a commercial trade paperback that you can get in any big box store. So just a general vibe of that is what we're looking for. If you, if we don't move forward with a trade at this time, that doesn't mean you're like, you know, no possibility ever in the future. As you collect more titles and you want to find them a good home, we encourage you to resubmit if we said no at any point. It might be because of stuff we have that hasn't sold yet or we have multiple copies of the same thing. Like I have three copies of The Idiot by Elif Batumin right now. Um, if you're sending me one, 
I probably would say no to that right now. And that's not because I don't think that's a good title for the store. It's just I have too many, for example. Do you hope to make this your full-time slash quit your other full-time job? I don't think so. Um, unless, <sighs> I don't know. I would have to make a lot more money <laughs> at Sunny's for it to be my full-time job. I have enough seniority in my career path right now where I'm making a good living and training that for something that I can still do part-time and it still feels fun and worth it to me. I don't know if that trade-off makes sense for me at this point in my life. I definitely want like a whole year of sales so I can kind of assess what what our actual revenue looks like and see how feasible that would be. I'm not against it, but I think I'll always have like a couple hands in different pots because that's just the chaotic person I am. What genres, what, what? What? <laughs> what genres do you have the most of? Definitely just like general literary fiction. Um, yeah. In the store, genres aren't really separated out from each other. It's just like four big bookshelves of mixed fiction and then one big bookshelf of nonfiction and then we have short stories and poetry separated. Uh, carrying a lot of like sci-fi and fantasy because that's what the people want and then also carrying a lot of poetry which people have been loving too that's also love the idea of starting something like the truck where I live how profitable was that <laughs> um <laughs> zero, zero. <laughs> that was not very profitable the and I think it could have been if we put more into it okay but I don't think I loved doing pop-ups and I think that's for a couple of reasons. The setup and breakdown of hundreds of books is straight up not fun. The conditions of being that social for eight hour periods of time, not fun. It felt, it feels very, very different being in the bookstore now and interacting with people slightly than like being at the truck and like being a salesman and like trying to get traffic in when you're at an event. Those are very different ways of interacting with people. It was just really tiring to be honest doing pop-ups and if you've ever done a pop-up and you're a maker of any sort you will know that. I'm really grateful for that being our beginning but uh yeah anyway your question was about how profitable was it and that i didn't answer that so the truck and the paint job that investment is probably like seven grand we absolutely did not make seven grand in sales of at, at our pop-ups and we didn't really do that many of them frankly before getting the store we probably did like i don't know like 10 total and that's because we bought the truck right before we moved to Portland and then we were settling into Yuma. And also the pop-up season in Yuma is only six months of the year because it gets so hot. Um, and there is a big maker pop-up community here, but we found for it to be worth our time, we were only interested in doing like the big city of Yuma sponsored events. So I don't know, gauge it, gauge what your local pop-up scene is like and maybe talk to a few other people I think if you had a lower startup cost, like you're doing it from a free truck you got, or you're doing a, a pop-up uh, picnic table that you cover with a tablecloth and you sell those used books from there, then that is a different story. And I think you could make your money back quicker. Um, but yeah, not very profitable is my answer for the truck. Um, would love to know about the money investment in the truck versus the store. How big of a jump is it? Not that much about half of it so again the truck the truck itself was like five grand I think and then our paint job was two grand which is crazy that it was like almost half the value of the actual vehicle but painting a car is expensive we found out and then again the store is around 15k so those are it's it's kind of apples and oranges though because you're buying a vehicle for one you know what I mean and the other one you're you're not you're just building stuff. 
Any future plans for in-person book club meetings? Yes, I need to get my ass in gear and start my programming calendar for fall. Cause we're definitely gonna like ramp up the community events. I wanna get something that feels more tangible for people in Yuma to meet in the space. I need to figure out what that is going to be. I honestly might retire the Sunny's book club at the end of 2023. It's not super profitable for me, but it is really fun and satisfying at the same time. So I still need to think through that a little bit, but regardless, I hope to have an in-person book club at one point um, and be in the space together a little bit more. Biggest surprise in the process so far. My biggest surprise, honestly, has been how many people are willing to buy new books at the store. I was really scared about that because a huge portion of the Sunny's pop-up success was the price of the used books. Like we have, we have really good used inventory. It's not, it's not crap. You know what I mean? You're, you don't go to this, the, the book truck or it's your used selection. It's like a million John Grishams and like Jody Picot, you know, it's, it's not that it's good stuff. Um, and people, I got a lot of feedback saying how much people appreciated that and they really liked our used inventory. And I was scared that when introducing new titles into the store, people weren't going to buy them because books are expensive. <laughs> new books are so expensive. It kind of blows my mind what an investment it is and what a privilege it is to be able to buy books. But, you know, a new hardcover is $30 and people are willing, able, and ready to support us on that level instead of going to a big box store, which I think is so affirming and so cool of them. So we are slowly gathering our new book collection and testing out in the store what makes sense to buy new. And I don't feel so afraid to do that anymore, which is nice. Will you still be doing pop-up events? Yes, question mark. <laughs> yes, question mark. So in Yuma, where we're at, we're on Main Street, which has a lot of fun events in the winter time. So we have like a lettuce day festival and like Christmas events, like a date festival, a tacos festival, a really fun community programming that brings tons of people in. So I think it would make sense as a business owner to have the truck out there and like have signs pointing to the, the retail store. But knowing like it's only me and Kiki and my dad, I don't know how feasible that's going to be. Um, and also all of our inventory almost is stocked in the store now, instead of being in storage and waiting to go for the truck. So like would I have to take the store inventory to the truck? I, I can't figure it out yet, but my gut says maybe yes, just, for the visual advertising to let people know that we do have a store and then maybe it just has like a smaller selection of stuff on the shelves. Are you changing your Insta handle or are you staying true to your roots? So right now all of our social media and our website is sunnysbooktruck.com. My answer right now is we're leaving it because it's a logistical nightmare and I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> uh, we also have like a lot of physical goods printed that say Sunny's Book Truck on them. I think we can just be sunnies, you know what I mean? Like people are just gonna like shorten the, the word. I do think it is a little confusing. People like, what's the book truck? Like people who don't know, and that's totally valid and fair. In retrospect, I should have just had the name be Sunny's Books and then we have like a truck and a store, you know what I mean? But we didn't do that. So we're, we're going with it for now, but maybe in a couple of years, if I ever feel like it, I'd change, I'd change all of our information. Who knows? What would you estimate total cost for the branding design work? I'm actually not going to be public about this because I've gotten such fabulously discounted rates from my friends and former coworkers that I don't want people to devalue what design costs because good design costs a lot of money. And if you're lucky enough to be friends with someone who can offer you those services at a discounted rate, then that's awesome. But a lot of people aren't and I'm not gonna like put the figure out into the world of what I paid for because you would be shocked of how much good design actual costs. Creative labor is expensive, um, especially when people are talented and good. So yeah, I'm gonna skip that one. I hope that's okay. How long is your lease for and do you plan on opening a standalone location? 
So right at standalone location, I think they mean my store right now, we're in like this small business aggregate on Main Street in Yuma and it's a bunch of tiny shops indoors. And I will be totally candid and say this is like not my ideal dream location, but it is one of the spaces that was available at a decent price point and wasn't huge. Like it was either this location or like 4,000 square feet for a bunch of money. And I'm like, damn. And I really felt the impulse and the desire to get out there and open something soonish. And I couldn't wait around forever for Yuma to like open the right location in the right spot for me. Um, but it's a year lease and the more I'm there, the more I'm liking it. There's a few things I don't love, but overall it is great. We have great neighbors. We have great foot traffic. It's air conditioned. Like I think it's, I think it's a good spot. I can see us being here for like two to three years for sure. Um, if we're lucky and you know, if we're lucky enough to grow substantially enough where we need to find a bigger space, then I'm open to it. But right now it feels good. It feels manageable for me. Best part of opening the store, worst part, best part. Hmm. I mean, it's just so satisfying to be able to go into a physical space that I designed and curated and put my energy into. And it's like, a space I own and people can interact with. And I think that is so fun and cool. It also is so affirming, like talking to readers about how much Yuma needed a space like this, how much they've been wanting an independent bookstore, how excited they are to be that we're here. Just the best. The worst part, I don't know, what would the worst part be? The setup of the store was like pretty gnarly we did it all in like six weeks which is a lot with a full-time job and we were renovating my dad's house at the same time so just like the stress of getting it open and making sure it felt good enough for us to like be in and present to the world was really stressful and also just like moving our initial inventory in was so miserable books are heavy books are really heavy <laughs> how many did you carry I carried a lot of books. Okay. This man. How are you handling stocking what you like versus what Yuma reads? So this is another kind of tactical decision I had to make upon opening the store. First of all, I think it's presumptuous to like know what Yuma reads. You know what I mean? Like I'm selling weirder stuff than I thought people would ever have an appetite for, which is great like a judgment call on my part that I got proven wrong on. I love that. There's also the reality that Yuma's population is very much so snowbird senior citizen driven. And those people like to read old people books for the most part. They love James Patterson and Dean Koontz and Danielle Steele and every other author with a mass market following that you can think of. And I'm not buying those books, baby. <laughs> um, they get donated to us all the time now and we have a free card outside where people can take them and the senior citizens are stoked on that they're loving it um i think it's important to bring something new to yuma and expose people to new perspectives and voices that maybe they hadn't heard before so you know what they like to read could be informed by what sunny's carries and i think that is the kind of symbiotic relationship of bookstore and readers need to have there's stuff that we carry for sure that i would never read like i have fourth wing in this store i have some colleen hoover but it's it's a few titles it's not it's not 90 percent of our inventory and then the 10 percent is the more curated weird shit that people might not have been exposed to before so i would say i'm just following my heart and putting out what i want to see in the world and seeing if it sticks and for the most part it has which is pretty cool Will you sell children's books? We do sell children's books. Um, the new, okay, so this is another buying thing, right? People are like, oh, you gotta have kids books. Like they sell so well. The few booksellers that I've talked to. Our new kids books, like picture books specifically, haven't sold that well at all. <laughs> um, our new middle grade books have sold very well. YA has not sold that well at all, which also is confusing to me because online, like, 
you know, the TikTok of it all. People love YA in theory. Haven't seen that so much in the store. Maybe it's because teens aren't school yet. Maybe it's because maybe it's because teens don't have money to spend. I don't know, but caveat. I mean, roundabout way of saying we do sell children's books. Will we sell them forever? Not sure. How do you source used books when you're not doing the merch exchange? So I thrift for them. I go to church library sales. I go to this giant used book sale in Phoenix. Um, well, I went to it for the first time last year, but I'm gonna go to it every year now. Uh, that has like 400,000 used books and I buy them there. I bought probably 300 books. So I'm still going through there, those there, but a lot of them are from trades, which is cool. Did you start in Portland? Why Yuma? Yes, I did start in Portland. We lived there for 11 years and recently moved back to my hometown of Yuma because of family stuff, but also low key to start the stream, baby. You know, big gift Yuma has given me is the space and the time and the audience, honestly, to be able to start another independent bookstore. Probably the last thing Portland needs is another independent bookstore. I mean, that's not true because I just went to a new one, Up Up Books, and they're awesome. So maybe you should open another independent bookstore in Yuma. But all I'm saying, I mean in Portland, but all I'm saying is like, there's a bigger audience here and it felt like some needs were unmet. How does it feel to make your dreams come true? Oh, it feels so good, you guys. Like, I'm honestly so grateful and ecstatic every day and I love going in and like stocking the store and just fiddling around and do to doing you know what I mean it feels like a dream still and feels really fun I love it that's it those are all the questions okay we'll end on the happy it feels like my dreams are coming true one um thank you for listening the bookstore tour is next have fun let me know if you have any questions that I didn't answer. Hope I don't regret being this candid. And love ya. Love ya. Bye. Hi, welcome to Sunny's Bookstore. It's me, your host, CJ Alberts. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna come closer to you now. Should we do a bookstore? Tour? Bookstore tour? Bookstore tour? Um, not loving the fluorescent lighting, to be honest, on camera, but we're gonna make it work. I own a bookstore now. I know I have talked about it ad nauseum. If you follow me on Instagram, you have seen it ad nauseum. But we're proud, baby. We're loud, we're proud, and I guess we're gonna do a tour. Maybe let me clean up for a second, because there's a few little... Maybe let me clean up for a second. Um, did you see that? Did you see me catch my camera? I'm gonna clean up the bookstore so I can like give you a proper tour. It's Tuesday, we're closed today. And I wanna show you around. To give you some context of where we are, we are in downtown Yuma on our main street. We're in this little small business aggregate that we call the 261 shops. It's really cute, we have like a pet store a stationery store, some clothing stores, and we are right next to this really pretty plant store, which is pretty gorgeous. So we're all the way down this hallway. I usually have a couple of trolleys of free books right there. And we are suite 10. Let me show you this view. It's pretty satisfying, right? you walk in the door this way these are said trolleys that are full of the free books so this is the first impression to to sunny's um maybe i'll go right to left let me pan out here so those are our sandwich boards we have those outside usually you know advertising getting people in the door we still need to get vinyl with our store hours on here and maybe like a fun illustration since that's just such a blank wall. Little cork board for like local events. If you've ever sent any like printed ephemera with your Sunny's trade stuff, it's on this wall. Nathan, shout out. And then we have this wall, 
which I'll talk through. So the bottom are three Ikea cabinets that we put together and then Kiki put a top on. So we have like some merchandise out and then two floating shelves above it. This bottom shelf is all of our short stories. So this is our collection. Everywhere in the shop, if you see a green sticker on the spine, that means it's a used book and they're priced per used book standards, right? So everything's a little bit cheaper. We've actually sold a lot of books, so I am waiting for my big refresh to come. So this shelf and poetry are a little bit spare right now, but I think we still have some solid stuff. And then for poetry, which I, to be totally candid, am not a huge poetry guy. I solicited a lot of friends' opinions on what I should stock in here. This is what we have. Maggie Nelson. A couple anthologies. Ann Carson. Small but mighty. People are really liking the poetry section more than I thought they would, which is cool. These three cabinets have storage. I don't know if I already said that, but we have like mugs and additional stuff down there. Um, have a couple of mugs displayed. These cool bandana of the month club bandanas that we are trying to stock. A few piecework puzzles. I have like a wholesale account on this website called Fair, which is for independent retailers who want to buy stuff from like small makers and that's where I'm buying all of the non-book goods. And then I'm also a Bagu reseller or a retail partner, whatever the right term for that is, which is very exciting. These Go pouches have not sold yet, but you know, we're, we're trying stuff out. We don't know what the market's really like here yet. <laughs> and then going back to this wall is a pegboard wall. I feel like I want to do like maybe like a painted mustard yellow border around it. So it has like a little bit more of a zhuzh or like a squiggle. I don't know. It needs a little, a little something, something on this wall, but I'm growing into the space. We have the Sunny's water bottles, keychains, some art prints. We've sold way more stickers than I thought we would. So I'm restocking a ton of those. Um, this is from a cool company called Peach Fuzz. They have a bunch of like queer stickers that we keep in stock. Maggie Nelson, these fun little coin purses, and then the unreliable narrator hats and stuff. Bagu packable sun hat as well. Have sold one of those. Shamagnet. Okay, that's that back wall. Then if we go over here, this is the checkout stand. Kihi also built this. We have a few greeting cards, which are really cute. This little cutie doll, barely holding it together. Here's to your next chapter. You deserve everything good that comes your way from a fun card company called Red Cap Cards. And then we have bagoos, more bagoos, stickers, some uh, little date snacks that I'm selling called Date Better a little print and some water bottles over here. This is all kind of like whip merchandising still, but you get the idea. And then up top, we have some socks and my favorite highlighter brand of all time, Stabilo Boss. It's the best. Okay, backing up, backing it, backing it up. We have our t-shirt rack over there. I feel like Eventually, as we grow into this space a little bit more, I'll get another one of these bookshelves and put it where those are. And uh, I don't know, move those out into the hallway or something, but for right now they're chilling there. We have one bookshelf that's all nonfiction and that's a total mix. It's like memoirs, essay collections, biographies, general nonfiction, nature writing, a bunch of stuff, um, as you can see mix of used and new and then we have four fiction shelves which is you know my personal bread and butter total mix of genres we got some fantasy 
We got some lit fic. We got some, that's on the wrong shelf, that's a memoir. We got some Zadie Smith, Marilyn Robinson, Sally Rooney. We got the Book of Goose. We got the new Catherine Lacey. I need to stalk and face this whole thing. We got, what do we have over here? Um, Elena Ferrante, Franzen, The Rabbit Hutch, They're Gonna Love You, More Sci-Fi, Mobility, which just came out, Ripe by Sarah Rosetter, Cusk, Imogene Binney, that is that whole wall. I don't know how many books that is, like maybe four or five hundred? It's not huge by any means, but again, we're growing into the space. And then if you turn back here, you'll see this big center table in the middle, which I'm calling like our themed center console, I guess. Um, in the center we have, on this side, some thrillers thriller suspense-ish, you know. <laughs> I feel like people like that genre, so I was trying to uh, provide them options. I get a lot of asks for what thrillers to read, and I'm like, I don't know, but here's a general idea. <laughs> um, they by Kay Dick, which I did love. Silver Nitrate, The Guest. The new Lisa Jewell, the new Re Rebecca Mackay. Kiki built all of this as well. He built that book stand in the middle and the center table. More greeting cards, a little collection of like zine artist books from Co-Conspirator Press. Uh, these like funny hair claw things that I got also from the Peach Fuzz, which is that sticker company I mentioned earlier. And then this side is Women in Translation for Women in Translation Month, because that's right now. We have Fernanda Melchor, Painting Time, The Employees, um, Dogs of Summer, I had to buy a bunch of more stuff for this table already that I'm still waiting on because it sold a lot more than I thought it would, which is exciting. Then on this side, oh, I need to reorder these. Um, some annotation tabs, which people have really liked. More zines and stuff from Co-Conspirator Press. And then those little date snacks again. I think eventually I'm gonna have Kiki build me like, kind of like, like a tall skinny like magazine rack here. And that's where I'm gonna put all the zines and like art books. So they're all just like kind of in that space and have a home. And then if you go over here, we have a little kid section with YA. So we have like true picture books, young readers, and then two stacks of young adult. Young Adult has not sold as well as I thought it would, so maybe eventually this will be consolidated into like one shelf and then we'll carry more picture books or more kids books, but um, that's kind of been a surprise. I thought more people would be reading YA, but in the first two weeks of being open, at least that hasn't been the case, which is fine. We're gonna give it more time to see like what people are really into. Um, these are all priced super cheap too if they're used. Like I'm trying to price everything like three to five bucks because kids books, they, parents go through them so fast. Um, so trying to keep it priced well. New stuff is list price though, of course. And then in my buying, I've worked with like a lot of children's librarians and parents who just have recommended me really fun titles. Like this is about a little group of witches. Okay, cute. And then if you back up, I have this little seating bench table, which people sit at all the time really surprised me. I almost didn't put any seating in here, which would have really been a mistake. And I'm glad I did. I sit there constantly. I like work from here almost every day. <laughs> Cause I'm still working my job in case you were curious. Yeah. And then I think I want to get like a mustardy seat cushion and then maybe, you know, like the cafe bench seating where they have the like back pad and then sometimes it's like held by a leather buckle. Maybe that would make that more comfortable. So I'm thinking like maybe we'll do that one day. But yeah, the big things to do is still getting like some signage. My neighbor next door is does signage. So I'm getting like real signs made for all of these. And then I actually am in talks with a really cool muralist from Canada 
to do like a custom mural on this back wall, which I'm really, really, really excited about. I, I mean, it like pains me having this giant empty wall here, but I didn't want to rush and like do something that didn't feel super like considered or fun for the space, I guess. So I'm taking my time and kind of like working out a trade detail with a fun muralist, which I think will be so fun. Okay, again, we're just like gonna pan, okay? We're gonna pan over. This rug in the middle is from Revival Rugs. I think it looks pretty good. But yeah, I don't know. It's probably like 600 square feet. And quite a few people can be in here at one time, which is nice. We got these like carpet tiles because the floor is this hideous like beige hospital mauve, which just like was not the vision, okay? And this is like not really the vision either in my ideal world. I would have liked to do maybe like a checkered white and cream vinyl vibe, but we're going with it. We couldn't have anything with sticky residue. And then over here, Kiki built this fucking wall too. Casual Kiki sleigh. We have all of our storage. So this is like all of the back stock of merch lives here overflow of used books that need to be shelved lived here all of the packaging and this all was living in my house so that is a huge plus of having a physical space besides all of the obvious stuff of you know interacting with people is this being out of my life <laughs> and this is my view couldn't love it more could not love it more 